Hi everybody, this is Brooke and I'm coming to you from my basement. Um, I've put together this PowerPoint to try to summarize um, some of the major concepts that were in the reading for this week. I realized that that was a, a lot and some of you guys have written about that in the forums. Um, I'm hoping that this PowerPoint will help you just focus on the big ideas, uh, some of those $10 words. Uh, <laughs> That's not the important part. Let's try to focus on the concepts and how they apply to um, your work as clinicians and as possible researchers. So here we go. So how do I know what I know, right? This is that epistemological question that the book raised in lots of different ways. I'm gonna focus on two of the research paradigms uh, positivism and social constructivism at this point. Now I want to highlight here that positivism, uh, the language they would use would be different right from the get-go. So positivism would say, my knowledge is obtained. I get knowledge from somewhere. While social, constructivist, social constructivists would say something more like, my knowledges are created. So right there, you can start to see the difference between the worldview and the paradigm that informs these positions. Now let's go a little deeper. Positivists would say, my knowledge is obtained through direct observation and measurement of a phenomenon. And I think the, the book did a, a decent job. What book am I talking about? The Hayes and Singh book did a decent job of talking about how positivists really are, are thinking about direct measurement that there's a phenomenon and they can directly measure it. There's nothing in the way. Now on the other side of the spectrum, social constructivists would say, my knowledges are created by people in interaction with their environment, including other people. And the term that comes up a lot in this paradigm is co-construction, which might sound familiar to some of you who, who work in the postmodern therapy models. Knowledge is co-constructed between researchers and participants. So if you look at a positivist uh, next to a social constructivist, I keep stumbling over that because um, in my world, I would call this more social constructionism, but the book is using constructivist, so I'm, I'm trying to mirror that language. But if you put these two side by side, you can start to see just how different the paradigms really are. All right, now let's move to an ontological question. What do I believe the nature of reality is? Looking at it again at positivists and social constructionists, you'll see maybe a positive, positivist would say, what kind of question is that? Like, why are we even talking about that? Maybe that's a little unfair, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to highlight the extremes. A social constructionist would say multiple realities and multiple truths exist. Okay, now, more seriously, a positivist might say, reality is real, truth is universal, and I capitalize truth on purpose. There's one truth, and we can find out what it is, says a positivist. Now, I want to add in another paradigm, post-positivism. Closely related to positivist positivism, but with some significant differences that are worth highlighting. A post-positivist would say, yeah, reality is real. Truth, there is a truth, but I can't see it. I can't get to it. It's not directly accessible. I can perceive pieces of reality, and through my research endeavor, I can approximate reality and truth. So that's a pretty important distinction. And I, I just throw out there that I think a lot of the research that is done in our field, in, in family therapy at least, is done from a post-positivist perspective. All right, so now you see I've moved post, uh, positivism is now off the slide, post-positivism is on the left, and now I've added another paradigm, the critical theories. So in the book they talk about queer theory and feminism, uh, I think disability studies might get mentioned in there. Um, they would argue that the nature of reality is that it is subjective and 
it has been influenced by oppressive experiences. So from a critical theoretical perspective, who you are as a researcher really matters. It really determines how you see the world, how you frame your questions. Um, you get the idea. So it's, it's close um, to social constructivism um, in that they're clearly not going to say, yeah, there's one world out there, one truth, and I can get to it. Now let's look back to how do I know what I know, back to epistemology with these three um, research paradigms. Um, you'll see that social constructivism and critical theories really align with each other in, in their epistemology. Knowledges are created or co-constructed with participants. So social constructivism and critical theories are really closely related in terms of their epistemology. Um, in terms of how they theorize how knowledge comes to be. Post-positivism, uh, on the other hand, says that knowledge is obtained through direct observation and measurement. Um, that measurement might be direct or it might be indirect. And that highlights that piece of post-positivism that says, I might not be able to directly access what I'm studying, but I can get pretty darn close. So why does this matter? Uh, why are we spending so much time on these research paradigms and you know, basically taking a detour into philosophy class for a week? I'd like to highlight that this really comes into play if you're doing a research project, obviously, right? You have to position yourself. You have to figure out what you believe. Uh, about the phenomenon that you're trying to study. But it also really matters for you guys as clinicians because it determines how you judge a piece of research, right? That's why I wrote looking ahead to validity and trustworthiness. Um, as you might be starting to see, the philosophical position that the researcher is coming from is going to determine how it's judged. So what makes research good from a positivist perspective is wildly different than what makes research good from a critical theory perspective. And we're going to get into that um, validity and trustworthiness more deeply in week six. Um, but I think it's worth highlighting now. What makes research valid? So as an example, a positivist would would say that research has to has to be uncontaminated by the researcher, right? If you're running a lab experiment um, and you accidentally spill some some of your Coca-Cola into your beaker, the experiment is off, right? It's not valid. That's a positivist scientific method kind of perspective. But then if you're thinking about a critical theory, theorist who is researching an intangible phenomenon, they're not going to have that same worry about researcher contamination. That, that, won't, that wouldn't even really make sense to them as a concept. So then as a reader looking at their work, if you're judging a critical theorist by uh, a positivist standard, you're not going to get anything out of the research. Um, how can we trust what we read? I put this last question up there because I think there's a tendency to think, okay, if I'm a social constructivist, then kind of anything goes. And anything I write as a researcher, you know, it's my experience, so it's right, it's real. That's not really the deal either. There are just different procedures and different requirements for that kind of research. Um, and it's actually a really rigorous thing to, to sort of account for as I'm learning, <laughs> I'm doing this right now, to build a trustworthy, qualitative um, report that comes from a social constructivist view takes a lot of work on the, the researcher's part. Um, and we'll talk about that more later. But that's why we're dwelling here, is that the concept of validity really changes depending on what research paradigm you're working from. Um, I'm going to 
gonna stop the recording here and this will come with a note about some things that um, I wanna communicate to you about next week's lesson, but I'll do that in written form. Um, I just wanna wrap up by saying, please contact me if this made things uh, more confusing, definitely reach out. Um, I want you guys to know that I'm here to help. So give me a call or an email. Hope you're doing well. Bye-bye.